ever pondered why the Bretton Woods system, an agreement that once dominated the global financial landscape, was suspended in 1971, we're about to delve into the enigma of Bretton Woods. Born out of the ashes of World War II, the Bretton Woods system was designed with a noble intention to stabilize global currencies and prevent competitive devaluations. The United States, being the economic powerhouse of the time, took center stage, its currency tied to gold and other currencies tied to the dollar. Yet as we all know, this system didn't last. Why? The answer lies in the gold standard. The US found it increasingly difficult to maintain the gold standard, as the value of the dollar was constantly under pressure from the country's persistent balance of payments deficit. The strain was too great, and in 1971, the Bretton Woods system was suspended. With the suspension of Bretton Woods, the world shifted from a fixed to a floating exchange rate system, a significant transformation in global economics. Fast forward to 2023, we encounter another momentous suspension, the U.S. debt limit. But what led to this decision? The U.S. debt limit, or debt ceiling, is essentially a legislative limit on the amount of national debt that can be incurred by the U.S. Treasury. It's a safety net, a financial fail-safe put in place to keep the country's borrowing in check. But in the year 2023, this debt ceiling was suspended. The reasons? A complex cocktail of economic factors and political disagreements. The economy was strained with national debt steadily rising, reaching levels that rang alarm bells across the nation. Simultaneously, the political landscape was riddled with discord. The ruling party and the opposition clashed, each armed with their own economic theories and solutions, and a consensus seemed like a distant dream. The decision to suspend the debt limit was not taken lightly. It was a move born out of necessity, a desperate attempt to keep the economy afloat and prevent a potential financial collapse. However, the suspension of the debt ceiling was not just about averting immediate crisis, it was a significant shift, a deviation from the traditional economic path. It was a decision that reflected the changing economic dynamics of the world and the evolving role of the United States within it. Just as with the suspension of Bretton Woods, the suspension of the U.S. debt limit marked a crucial turning point with far-reaching implications. So, how do these two suspensions compare, and what can we learn from these historical economic shifts? In the heart of the matter, both the suspension of Bretton Woods in 1971 and the suspension of the U.S. debt limit in 2023 were born out of economic instability. Each decision was a direct response to a financial system under strain, a clear signal that the old rules no longer applied. The Bretton Woods system, with its fixed exchange rates and gold standard, was a product of a different era. By the time it was suspended, the world economy had evolved. The system was no longer tenable. Similarly, the suspension of the U.S. debt limit was a reaction to an unprecedented debt crisis, a crisis that demanded innovative solutions. Both of these suspensions had far-reaching implications on global economics. Bretton Woods End ushered in an era of flexible exchange rates, fundamentally changing the way countries interacted economically. The suspension of the U.S. debt limit, on the other hand, challenged the very notion of sovereign debt and opened the door to new approaches to fiscal policy. Before we conclude, if you're finding this content insightful, do subscribe for more discussions on these intriguing economic shifts. From the suspension of Bretton Woods in 1971, to the suspension of the U.S. debt limit in 2023, we see time and again that economic paradigms can shift dramatically, challenging us to adapt and rethink our strategies.